are back on the homestead. It's been a couple years. We bought this place in 2011 and it is now 2019. The last couple years we've had it rented out to a cool couple that uh, they kept chickens and they worked in the garden, but um, they pretty much um, had charge of our permaculture, food foresty, edible landscape, uh, homestead, farm, garden, whatever you want to call it. It's a little bit more than a garden, a little bit less than a farm, somewhere in between. But um, before we get too far into all the work and getting everything cleaned up and uh, to the point where we like it, I wanted to take you guys on a little bit of a farm tour and uh, show you where our starting point is for uh, here 2019. So this is probably a good place to begin. This is our uh, vegetable garden, formal, formal garden area. That's one of the spots that's uh, totally fenced in in that area. And then we also grow a bunch of veggies in that and these beds that are not too distinct at the moment. Um, we've got some artichoke left in the ground here that looks like it's doing really well. This uh, lamb's ear has completely naturalize it's a little bit of everywhere we've got a ginkgo tree here we like to grow pretty much everything that's edible and medicinal and so um, i like flowers and things in the garden but i also like things that we can use so this is an american cranberry that was just a baby when we left it has now pushed out really good and taken over um, these beds need to be totally rejuvenated but we have lamb's ear taken off in here lemon balm um, there's some little strawberries that I'm waiting to see if they're gonna bear fruit before we pull it all out but I think that this is probably gonna be sheet mulched and uh, reclaimed for vegetable crops um, they've got some uh, a few onions and a bunch of garlic going in here but it is mid-May, so we'll see how this stuff looks to see if I decide to keep it until it's harvest time in July. Um, otherwise, we're just gonna go for it and get some other crops planted in here. I wanna show you guys this though. So we planted a few autumn olives. So this here is the autumn olive. They were, I had intended to cut them to the ground every year as a nitrogen fixer and to support other trees that had been planted. Um, but they have definitely taken off. They flower just amazing and they smell a lot like jasmine is kind of what they remind me of. So we're actually gonna wait to the, get to the point where we can take some cuttings off of these and then, um, or keep at least one of them and the rest of these are just going to be chopped back to the ground as soon as they're done smelling good. There's actually a service berry in there that I want to recover. Uh, we've got some a gooseberry currant hybrid in there. Things have just definitely grown up and taken off. This is the bed where we normally do the hops. So we first thing we did when we got here is strung up the lines for the hops and tried to get those going so it uh, looks like we got here just in time to get those going for the year but we'll keep you updated on those and um, we use the hops for tea and beer and uh, cosmetics we got some rhubarb there so these are just two beds out in front of the house that we use for this. It's kind of an ornamental thing going on here. We've got a vine maple, a red flowering dogwood, and then a yellow flowering dogwood over here. This bed out front, this is a curly willow that we had meant to coppice just about every year. Uh, that hasn't been done and so it's kind of gargantuan at this point but this is a um, dwarf cherry that uh, is actually fruiting out really nicely so um, I really like the way that it's growing it's got some nice structure to it we've got some 
garlic that's been in here for a couple years. I think that the tenants maybe were afraid to move things that we had planted. Um, but then we've got, uh, this is kind of where I tried to put in a blueberry patch. Uh, it does not look like they're thriving. So um, we're going to give them a little bit of feed and see what happens. Maybe they take off. If not, we'll move them. So we've got a lot of medicinals mixed in with um, ornamentals. A lot of this stuff was already here. This is, I believe, um, either Valerian or Angelica. I need to, I have always had a hard time telling the two apart. This will be rejuvenated. Lemon balm is taking off. This bed I came through and weeded it already. It was a bunch of lavender and herbs. So the oregano is doing really good. We got some thyme there. It's doing pretty good. Um, some lav some of the lavender did okay. We've got the yarrow there. Lamb's ear. This bed doesn't get a whole lot of water, so um, we're just kind of selective about what we put in there, things that don't need a whole lot of water, and I like good drainage in that. Lavage. The raspberry patch over there is getting a little bit of TLC. Chicken yard needs some fence repair. We have our compost piles there that we rotate through. We had gotten to the point where we were producing all of our own compost, and so I'm looking forward to doing that again. Um, I have 15 baby chicks that are coming. These are tenants' chickens that are gonna be going at the end of the month. Here's the chicken yard. We had this fully automated. The chicken door runs on a solar panel that automatically opens and closes when at daylight and dusk. And an automatic chicken water that goes to a nipple watering bar. This, uh, when we established this place, uh, we used a lot of just reclaimed materials that were left here that this pretty much this whole chicken coop was made from reclaimed material this used to be a rabbit hutch that I turned into a planting bench that then turned into a chicken coop that has really served us very well and then the chicken yard the main chicken yard up here was used uh, we used old fence rails and cedar off the property and then um, around the barrier we used, or the border. I can't get that to focus through the fence, but just some old um, blocks of wood to uh, secure the bottom of the fence. And actually that, that area is done really well. But we're looking at moving that and possibly using the chickens to terrace someplace else because they've terraced this off really well. I think we're considering finally taking down some of these trees to let in more morning light as you can see is blocked back there. Here is the main garden area. We have it situated into four main beds that are four by 16 feet. Uh, we wouldn't normally use pressure treated lumber but this stuff was old, so old by the time uh, we laid these beds. They, it was all just reclaimed from the landscaping, the people that owned the house before we did. Um, but it was so broken down that it was a lot of it was starting to rot, so we felt like it was safe to use, that there weren't really any chemicals left there. I had set up an automatic um, drip irrigation system, so we're going to be troubleshooting that and just making sure um, it's still working as it's supposed to. We might have to do some updates on that. Um, I am looking forward to getting this area planted with seeds for this year and really start to produce food for the summer. It's mid-May, so we're not too far behind the curve, but I usually have stuff going out here in 
February and March. So I'm feeling a little bit of a time crunch. This is our greenhouse that has been a little bit overshadowed by this apple tree that has completely taken off. It hasn't been pruned in like three years. I had done a lot of rehabilitation pruning on that um, before we had handed this over to tenants. Um, but it's doing really good. I think we're just going to move the greenhouse. We're going to maybe resituate it over in the chicken yard after those trees come down. And this is just another bed. As you can see, we live on a hillside. So this is sloped out here. And so we just take advantage of any flat space that we can possibly find. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. The nice thing about this hillside over here though is that it's actually quite productive in terms of huckleberries. So we get Northwest um, tall bush huckleberries, a few gallons every year. We had slowly been working on terracing bits off. We had tried some fruit trees down below. A couple of them took. Uh, a couple of them were annihilated by a deer. That's always been a struggle for us is managing the deer out here. So putting up a serious deer fence is definitely going to be a priority. We have a tiny little asparagus patch going. But we decided to go ahead and let this stuff go for the rest of the year and really power up the roots and hopefully it will spread a little bit. Got a little bit of horseradish in here that I'm really happy didn't take off too much. I was <laughs> that's one that you got to keep contained otherwise it'll take over. We had tried some aronia berries but as you can see those really never took off and I think it's probably because you can see this the stems there. Um, we got these as plugs from Burnt Ridge Nursery and they just never did thrive so I think we're going to take some cuttings off of that too and try again. We're going to be taking cuttings off a lot of this stuff, especially the stuff that's just gotten too big for zone one. Yeah, the stuff that's crowding out the veggie area, we'll go ahead and get that planted in further zones, but we're happy to be back. Super happy. So anyways, I'm going to get to work. Uh, first things first, we are rejuvenating some of these old garden beds. Uh, we have managed them organically and no till, or at least very minimal till for several years, and our tenants did the same thing. And so, um, step one, I went through with a big uh, garbage bag and collected uh, all the weeds that were going to seed that I really don't want. Shotweed, um, stinky herb roberts, um, some of the dandelion. I like to have some dandelion, but I don't want it taking over. So I went around and collected a bunch of dandelion seed heads. We're pulling all the old plant material. Um, we, there was a bunch of broccoli that um, had flowered. And uh, so we're getting that out. We just want to make room for seeds. But, and here's one of the benefits of no-till is we have, I'm pretty sure these little things here are self-sown asparagus. I'm pretty sure that that's what those are. They look like they could be dill, but I took a little, a little nibble and it's not dill. And right here is our asparagus patch. So I think that we might have a spreading asparagus patch. So I am being very careful in here to only pull the things that I don't want and to leave those little baby asparagus, if that's what they are, behind. We'll see if a little bit of TLC will encourage them to stay. I don't want this video to be too long. I just wanted to give a quick walkthrough of the before, before we um, really go to work on this place and whip it back into shape. We'll keep you updated on the progress. I'm Tanya, in case you didn't know, and thanks for watching. Happy gardening. Oh my gosh, those guineas are back. Just a second. Yeah. Psst, psst, psst. Go. Oh. 
Oh my goodness. The neighbor has guineas. They get to run free range. They like to range in our garden. At least they don't scratch and they eat bugs, but they're very noisy and they definitely disturb the peace. So anyways, I was saying we're back on the mini farm and we are 